Hello, everyone. Sergio here with the Rideshare Guy. Uh, welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. This is a special one today. Um, actually, it's a sad occasion, but I felt compelled to do this. So um, Peter from Los Angeles um, is a driver for about six, six and a half years. Uh, he wasn't the good news for for uh, not something that good, okay? Uh, he uh, was actually in on KTLA, so uh, all of you can actually Google him. Uh, Uber driver beaten in Los Angeles and La Cienega and Fairfax. And uh, there is surveillance audience. I mean, there is surveillance footage of that, but KTLA also reached out to him, which is a ch local Channel 5, and interviewed him. Um, you guys can watch that, obviously. But I was uh, lucky enough to get a hold of him, and uh, I'm definitely going to find out what happened, and I'm going to push Uber to do everything they can for this man, okay? So with that said, Peter, welcome. Well, thank you once again for being who you are. Uh, you are constantly out there putting out real information that's necessary for people out there in the field. Yeah, I Thank appreciate you. that. But this is not about me. This is all about you. And uh, so uh, how long you been a driver? <clears throat> I've been a driver now for a little over six and a half years. And how many trips? Uh, I'm sorry, a little over 16,840 uh, something. Okay. Are you doing this? So a, a fair number. Okay. Are you doing it full time? I am. Okay. Uh, I'm 70 now. I uh, spent about 35 plus years in the financial services field, much okay. like yourself. Okay. And when the world changed, more and more people found themselves uh, being drivers in today's economy. Yeah. So I'm just another one of the people out there working for a living. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, what I want you to do is I want you to um, second by second, uh, walk me through from the pickup of this um, animal to the drop-off and obviously what happened after that. Okay. The call came in probably around quarter to one Sunday morning. I had passengers in the call or in the car. Uh, we were a couple of minutes away from dropping them off. And a ride came in that was right around the corner on Lancashire in North Hollywood. Uh, I accepted the ride. Uh, and within maybe a minute, the passenger was calling me to let me know where he was. So he was very anxious. Uh, dropped off the people that I had. Uh, went, pulled over. Let him talk to me, explain to him that while we were talking, uh, I, I don't have access to my screen. Right. So you need to let, I know where you are, honest, I'll be there in just a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, take them up. He settled down. Uh, just an average pickup on Lancashire Boulevard. Uh, he was going actually to the corner of Hollywood and La Brea was, okay. was the end destination. Okay. Well, along the way, I, I don't know whether he was talking on the phone or talking to himself, but he, he was having some animated conversations. And after we got off on Highland, we were getting on to the Franklin, and suddenly he starts reaching over and showing me the phone. Of, this is where I need to go. I, I, I know where you need to go. We're moments away. Yeah. Well, he keeps trying to put, I'm trying to drive here, please. I know where we're going. So we get to the corner and I say, okay, we are here where you're going is right over there in the corner. He says, no, it's not. Uh, yes, honest, it is, sir. It's right, right here. No, show me on the phone where it is. Well, sir, I don't need to show you on the phone. It's right there. Uh, and this went on for maybe two to three minutes. Right. <clears throat> then he just started staring at his phone. Well, now we're five minutes in. I'd already accepted another ride. So I, I turned the car off. 
went around the side, opened the door, said, sir, it's Saturday night. It's my busiest night of the week. I really have to go. This is your location. You got to get out of the car. Well, he came out and he came out swinging. And it went from there. I'm 70. I have COPD. I I can't uh, get enough oxygen to stand there and and box. Yeah. Uh, So I I grabbed him. We went down to the ground and we rolled on the ground for probably four to five minutes. Uh, A crowd of about 10 to 12 people gathered and refused to get involved. They absolutely wouldn't even call 911. And please call 911. Uber driver. Problem. Please. We're rolling around for four to five minutes. Nothing. Finally, it ends. Uh, I get up, go to the car. No, actually, the first thing I did was I, I, I felt that. My face was a little different. Well, I had, used to have a crown here. I, I still have it, by the way. I found the crown. But then I went and I called Uber, let them know what had happened, uh, called 911, spoke to the 911 operator. She said there'd be an officer there in a few minutes, uh, confirmed the location, actually the southwest corner of La Brea and Hollywood Boulevard. Okay. And uh, I called my girlfriend, let her know what had happened. Well, by that time, 10 to 15 minutes had gone by, still no sign of a police officer. I called back 911, let them know nobody had shown up yet. They must be very busy. That's what the 911 operator said. Uh, I said, well, look, I, I'm driving from out in the San Fernando Valley. There's a police station near the hotel where I drive from. Let me go ahead and, and make a report as soon as I get back there. Okay. So, so I drove well, back let me, here. let me stop you real quick there. So obviously uh, this guy beat you up and I've seen your pictures. Actually, you have healed amazingly well for about a and week. That's this, exactly what I finished telling my girlfriend. This happened All about, uh, this happened, Saturday. when did this happen? Last Saturday, right? It happened last Saturday, so right. you're talking nine days. Yeah, nine days. I'm telling you, um, I expected a lot worse, but I have seen your pictures right after it happened, and it, it was ugly, right? You had a swollen was, eye, you had a broken tooth, you had cuts and bruises everywhere, and uh, it seems like you're a fast healer, even for 70 years old. Um, so what did the guy do? Did the guy just walk away after he beat you up? That's exactly what happened. Actually, Channel 5 got a hold of the liquor store, and they had uh, the camera footage. Okay. And what they showed was just the very beginning and the very end. They, yeah. they clipped the middle. Yeah, but I it showed the guy just walking off into the distance. And again, there's no vetting to be a writer. Yeah. All you well, no, let's, let's, get, let's not get into that yet. So let's walk you through... Um, um, obviously, you called the cops. They didn't show up. Typical. Um, and... Uh, I mean, did, obviously, I'm assuming you stopped driving and went home, right? Is, I'm, I'm assuming that. Went back, went back, checked in with my girlfriend uh, instantly. Uh, well, get my my uh, albuterol inhaler because uh, yeah. I was having issues with breathing. Yeah. Well, then went over to the police station uh, here in Mission Hills on Sepulveda, which is a couple of minutes away. Yeah. And they closed at a certain time. Oh they're, 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 they're not always open anymore. Okay. So I had to call 911 again from there. And she said they're busy. They don't have anybody to come out right this moment. So at that time, a police vehicle was coming in and they had a prisoner in the car getting ready to book them. I explained my situation. They said they'd get to me as quickly as they did. Well, 10 to 15 minutes later, they opened up the police station. Uh, I went in, made the police report. They called paramedics. Paramedics came over, checked me out. They cleared me, uh, finished up the police report, uh, and came back here to uh, the hotel here at the Valley Inn and uh, went went ahead and called Channel 5 to go ahead and get the word out that uh, 
you have to be aware. And it's just amazing to me how detached people have become. It was like we were the entertainment. That's sad. No. That's sad. That's sad for society, obviously, because everybody has their phone out recording as opposed to helping you out. And uh, so, um, so let's let's check back just a little bit more. I mean, I know a day later or two days later, right? You started driving again. I mean, I was driving again. Uh, this happened on Sunday morning around one fifteen in the morning, and I was back driving again on Tuesday night. I drive night shift. My girlfriend drives during the days. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's go also talk a little bit about, um, you called Uber safety uh, line, obviously. You reported the incident. And I saw correct. I saw the email they sent you that they removed this gentleman. This, this guy's not a gentleman. He's an animal. They removed him from the platform. Big yoop de doo um, what did they say? Did they promise you anything? Did they no. Are they doing anything about this situation? Uh, they turned me over to their insurance company, and I'm now in the process of, of uh, dealing with the insurance company. I've spoken with the adjuster. They're very, very nice. Uh, more will be revealed. Okay. I will keep I will I will keep uh, everybody um, updated with the situation, obviously. But as I said at the beginning, um, I mean, I have spoken to um, um, Peter before, but I am um, definitely going to make sure that he's taken care of. Um, this has gone to Uber already. Now, um, well, you're out there driving two days later with a broken face, with a broken tooth and scratches and cuts everywhere, right? Why? The advantage of driving at night. Yeah. Why, why Peter? Why? I mean, I know, I, I understand this. everybody's situation is different, uh, but... Talk to economics. me a little bit about um online economics. Yeah. Uh, most of my life I've been in a commission job field. Okay. Uh, real estate, real estate loans, commercial insurance, much like yourself. Well, I find myself uh, about six and a half years ago, I went broke. Yeah. And when you go broke in today's economy, you're dead. Yeah. Well, Uber yeah. gave me the ability to generate cash flow. Yeah. Now, my experience has been that unless you're a 25-year-old living at home with your parents, you can't earn a living doing this because yeah. of the cost of doing what you do. But you generate cash flow. And it gave me the opportunity to continue to be able to look for other opportunities. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you said you're 70, so I'm assuming you're retired, right? <clears throat> well, no, I'm driving right here. No, I know, but I'm saying retired in the sense of you're at retirement age. That's what I meant to say. Absolutely correct. But yeah. like yourself, most of my life I've been self-employed. Yeah. So I, I'm not eligible for Social Security or other benefits. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about right here, right? Let's talk a little bit about um, safety issues. Let's talk a little bit about onboarding of passengers without vetting them. You know, I know you have a lot to say, so I'm going to give you the floor and then uh, you go right ahead. <clears throat> well, reality is in order to be a driver, you have to be vetted. You have to have a vehicle uh, that's capable of fitting the parameters of that ride to your company. You have to have insurance. You have to have a good driving record. You have to have a current license. There's requirements. But in order to be a passenger, it can be as simple as walking in to a grocery store, buying a prepaid debit card under any name at all, and setting up your ability to use the app. That's all that's required. Uh, there is no vetting, and that's their model. It's understandable. Yeah. But it, uh, how about no okay? Uh, how, how about I mean, you know, you said you've been driving for six, six and a half years. You have seen the good, the bad, the ugly, right? As far as it's your the earnings is the first as, time as, I've had earnings. any kind of a problem in over sixteen thousand eight hundred rides. Yeah. Uh, most people, they're really glad you're there. 
Yeah. I think this young man was hallucinating. Yeah, he was and high on something. Yeah. Other explanation for the behavior. Don't know. Okay, so nothing like this has happened before out of 17, almost 1,000 chips, right? Correct. Most people just want to get to where they're going in, yeah. in a timely manner. Yeah. That's why they're calling. What do you what do you think it triggered this guy other than him being some some sort of, under some sort of influence or something? I have no idea. Uh, I really don't know because his behavior was very disjointed. Okay. But what I do believe to be true is that whoever had picked this passenger up was going to have a problem. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what we say in uh, on Show Me the Money, right? If you accept a trip and they call you, you should cancel that trip. You should. That's trouble because most people don't even call or text. They just wait and then get picked up and go where they need to go. My You're absolutely correct. Yeah, my experiences has been that if you if they call you, they immediately cancel. They're up to no good. I mean, not that not necessarily, but the K, the odds are that they're already starting trouble in their head or whatever. You're absolutely they are. correct. Um, let's talk a little bit about your six and a half year experience in earnings, right? I mean, six and a half years ago was pretty pretty good, probably. And we know what's happening today. What has your experience been like? And how many cars have you been through in, in six and a half years? Uh, on, on the third one now. Okay. Uh, since I started driving. Wow. Okay. Uh, fourth, fourth, I'm sorry, fourth car since we started driving. Uh, when you're a rideshare driver, you put on a lot of miles. Yeah, and and, and, you, and you said that that so you you drive the night shift with the same car as your girlfriend drives the day shift with the same car, correct? Correct. Yeah. And, so and so you're both rideshare drivers, and you're literally running that car twenty four hours, pretty much. Pretty much, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. And there's a cost to that. Yeah. Uh, maintenance is expensive because you have to be able to do preventative work yeah. because if you're down uh suddenly not only do your expenses continue but your expenses increase yeah. now you have no money coming in because your vehicle's down and you have to put money out to get back on the road yeah i agree I agree. And and we know what's happening with our gas prices again, right? Up to five, five uh, and a half. Uh, yeah. Gas prices are really under five. Yeah. And any trip that you accept that's under five dollars, chances are you're losing money on that trip. Yeah. So uh, are you, uh, let's lighten it up a little bit. So are you a cherry picker or do you accept every trip? You know, I, I prefer to get started on the longer trips. Okay. Uh, but the reality is, is that there's a lot of trips out there that are between, uh, let's say, 8 and $15. Uh, that's the vast majority of the trips that I experience at night. Yeah. Now, driving at night is a little different environment. Yeah. Mostly at night, people are going out to socialize they're going to social functions not always true you have your workers that are going back and forth but that's primarily your daytime drivers so my girlfriend is much better at taking elderly people to the doctor's appointment or picking them up uh, from their nursing home to go wherever they're going she, she's that kind of person yeah. I, i'm prefer the night crowd. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, obviously, you know, you, 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 you learned something from this experience and, and, um, Hopefully. And, and, and I mean, look, most people, okay. And, and that includes probably me. If I had gone through an experience like this, um, would have stopped driving altogether. I mean, my hat's off to you that two days later, you're back on the horse. You know, got to do what no. you got to do, right? The bills are coming. Bill, bills don't stop. Air Force, Vietnam veterans, 72 to 75. Yeah. yeah. I mean, your attitude is amazing, man. I'm telling no you. Life skills. 
you you have a smile on your face, which is amazing to me after getting beat to a pulp like eight days ago, nine days ago. Um, what do you think should happen to this? Bad experience steal your joy on day to day living. Yeah, but what do you think? What do you think should happen to this uh, animal? Um, you think he should he should get arrested, right? I I'm sure if he hasn't already found himself in trouble. His behavior isn't going to stop. So he's going to do this to someone else under different circumstances. And sooner or later, uh, he's going to have to answer for the activities. Well, Uber Uber has this his information, right? Of course so, they do. Um, but you don't and, and, and actually, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make sure that this guy ends up behind bars. I, I'm, I I'm promise thinking. that I promise you. Um and uh will you press charges? Will you face him? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is, you know, we're, we want to we have a couple of minutes left. We want to finish on a high note, okay? Uh I I mean, your attitude is absolutely amazing. So I I, I don't know what to say. I'm actually shocked. First of all, I'm shocked that you have healed as well as you have healed. Again, people Go watch the KTLA interview the day this event took place or the day after where they went to his hotel and where he drives from and interviewed him. I mean, it's a night and day. It literally is because you wouldn't recognize him. But uh, more importantly, you know, he has to do what he has to do. He's out there driving two days later. Um, but give our audience some advice. I mean, you you lived a life of 70 years. Give our audience some advice. Any kind of advice it doesn't have to be right here. Situational awareness at all times in today's current environment. We shouldn't have to live under the circumstances we find ourselves, but here we are. Uh, if you find yourself in trouble, chances are you're going to have to handle the situation yourself at that immediate moment of time. And as things get worse out there in the current economy, there's going to be more and more acts of violence that are random. And if you've been watching the news here in L.A., there's been a plethora of, of incidents on the metro line, uh, some going to the point of death. So all things being considered, I'm very lucky the guy didn't have a knife or a gun uh, that's why I'm grateful to be here. It could have been far worse. Yeah. And fortunately for me, I've got great genetics, and I blame that on my Canadian ancestry. Yeah. I was born in Canada. Yeah. But uh, it's a great day out there. And once again, thank you for being you and putting this stuff out to the community. No, it's, my, it's my duty, man. I mean, look, I, I'm a driver's advocate, uh, first and foremost. Um and well, um, you've been a driver you know you've oh, got absolutely. your finger on the pulse absolutely yeah i mean i drove i drove last weekend and and to me um the vetting process of these riders is garbage they should not be on these platforms but then you know crime is crime crime can take place anywhere i don't know how this event could have been stopped to be honest with you because you didn't, do, you didn't do anything I've wrong that through my head a thousand times yeah you didn't do anything I wrong have done anything any differently yeah you didn't do anything wrong you just were just victim of circumstance and just ended up with a crazy moron which again, i am again like i said i am driver. I'm going to make sure he ends up behind bars because number one, Uber knows who exactly he is. Number two, there is surveillance, you know, video from that liquor store. He, his picture is right out there. And I watched that video as graphic as it was. I watched it. I watched him sit on top of you and punch the crap out of you. Right. I mean, that's assault. He needs to go to jail. So, and Uber needs to take care of you. Uber needs to compensate you for, for your injuries, for your medical bills. Uber, I know you're going to watch this. I'm going to hold you to it. I'm not going to let this one go. Um, so we will chat later with Uber. But uh, Peter, I, I'm I'm shocked, amazed, happy for you that you're okay. And, um, you know, um, thank you for doing this, man. Uh, no, thank you for being you. Thank you. All right, people, here he is, my new hero in LA. Actually, this is reality. 
He lives about 10 minutes from where I live. Me, him, and his girlfriend, we're definitely going to go have some dinner, you know, hopefully next week. And, um, you know, What's not talk about good? negative stuff. Talk about positive stuff. Because as you guys can see, attitude is everything. Look at his attitude after nine days of getting beat up by an animal, right? So my hat's off to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching this episode of Behind the Wheel on the Ride Chair Guy. We've been doing these interviews for the past six months with very successful drivers from different cities around the nation. Click here for another episode. Make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications for other episodes of Behind the Wheel as well as amazing content on our channel.